Do you have a failed drive on your Unraid server? Do you want to be prepared for a failed drive before it happens? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to walk you through some options to get this taken care of. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ryan Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to deal with a failed drive in Unraid. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to deal with a failed drive in Unraid. And this is targeted specifically at those that have just gotten their first Unraid server. First, we're going to talk about verifying a failed drive. We're going to talk about rebuilding with an existing drive as far as the ones just failed, and I'll explain it in just a minute. And the same process will apply to if you cannot get it to rebuild or if it errors out again rebuilding with a brand new drive and then we'll talk about a review of the four tips which is going to be in more detail in another video this will help you deal with some of the failures that you may run across a little bit easier and be a little more prepared for the next time now dealing with a failed drive or one that's failing sometimes you'll get a little bit of advance warning it's not something that any of us wants to deal with but unfortunately it's a fact of life when you deal with mechanical devices occasionally they're gonna go down the proverbial drain hole so let's walk through what you'll expect to see and we'll go through a couple of different ways of how to deal with it. So we'll switch over here to my Unraid server and you will notice two things. Well, the one that stands out in front of you is the messages here. First, it had check it about noon. It thought it was okay. And then about 223, it went, ah, oh, we got to drive with problems. And then it proceeded to repeat that error with a little more assertiveness saying, uh, Houston, we have a problem. If you go over here, then you will see the red X. That's the telltale sign. We're going to show you this one way of doing it, and it will work for both of the situations. Well, the first thing we're going to deal with is rebuilding to an existing drive. And I did this deliberately the first time I ran into a failure because I wasn't too sure if the drive was actually failing or what was going on. The errors did come back, which is what you're seeing this time so with that one being a red x okay you're running on the parity drive at that point and what's been spread across the other drives but so we don't want to let that one run too long fortunately i'd already ordered a replacement drive so we will go in here we will first you got to take the array offline now we'll notice here it has it says sde but i'm looking at the the last four of the serial number z zero david romeo okay we'll we'll look at that here in just a moment so we're gonna have we unfortunately unless you have a hot swap chassis and those are get kind of expensive we're gonna have to stop the array so we will stop the array and then the screen's going to change on us and while we're doing that we can go ahead and close these notifications because i think we kind of know we have a drive problem it'll take it just a second to stop things because i did have a my Plex server running on it and there's never a good time to take it down so i'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and do it so it should come down here in just a moment and so you can't click on stop again so it is working on it okay now that it did stop and you see it's carried over here disc two which i was careful on how i laid it out that it should be on cable number two but we're going to look at this z zero dr or is it zo that's hard to tell with some of the fonts they use i would say it's probably z zero dr anyway we it's it's unique when you compared it to the other four so what we have to do is we first have to take this one out and we'll take it to no device and then we'll start the array up so that it knows that it's not there i'll take it just a moment to go through it now see it's it's already gotten a pop-up message that we've that we have a you can't see it because of me uh we've already gotten a pop-up message that the array now is considered good it says not installed but it knows something is still there so now what we're going to do is power the server down and go in to pulling out the drive putting the new one in i'm not going to make you sit through all that because i think we all know how to replace a drive so i just heard the server beep and is in the process of shutting down once we get the message here that the ser the system is shut down then i'll get the case opened up change out the drive and then get it powered back up and we can go through the rest of the process. As you are installing your latest smart home device, grab a copy of my smart home checklist. This will help you record information about each device as you set it up. This will prove helpful when you need to find out where to get the firmware updates from or support on that device. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information 
to anyone. Now we've got the drive replaced. So and it started back up. Everything was, was fine. So now we've got to stop the array so that we can add the drive to the system. So since it's just starting up, we'll probably butt some heads here momentarily with apps that are starting up under Docker. But guess what? We're going to win because this has got to be done. I mean, I don't want to be running on the parity drive and putting additional load on the other drives because as I understand the parity, it's got the one parity drive and then apparently there's some information built across the other drives too. So just want to be prudent in getting this replaced. Okay, now that we've got this replaced, now you see where it had unassigned in disk two. So we'll click on the down arrow and then we should see the drive that I just put in. And it sees that it is a different drive. And this is the same process you go through if you wanted to try to remirror a drive that it looks like it's failed. Because I've had sometimes things be false positives. So we will click on start. And then it should complain here in just a moment about being unmountable. And by the way, where it, where the drive was in the cable, it was not on the disk to connection. So it's just how it spun up the first time. And this drive literally just arrived a few hours ago because I had a feeling this one was probably going to happen and it's automatically rebuilding. So I thought I was going to have to go ahead and manually add it, but it's obviously happy at this point. Just checking some settings down in here to make sure we don't have any other surprises. You will want to record anytime you're changing drives to go ahead and put the manufacturing date in. That one's not so much as critical, but it's the date of purchase and the warranty period because when you go to replace a drive, that's going to be important information to have to know if that drive can still be replaced under warranty. That's, but I'll do that after it's up and running because at this point it's already rebuilding drive content being instructed. Okay, well, let's go back over here and let's see if we have. Okay, so it is obviously just took off and running. I was expecting it to say it was going to have to be cleared. So now this is just a case of hurry up and wait. It saw a drive apparently that was ready to go where some of the other drives I've had to tell it to go ahead and format the drive. That's a, a nice reflection. At this point, this is getting recorded about seven, eight hours after I got the drive replaced. And let's switch over here. And you'll notice that everything has a nice little dot beside it saying normal operation. So we're good there. And if we go over here into logs, not seeing anything there, if we go down to tools, system log, and this is where you can go back a little bit further. And this is where it got restarted at one point and going through the logs. If anything was a bad problem, you would have seen it and it just looks like a normal startup situation, which is good, which now we need to get back to what I'll call the, the four uh, tips. And I've got a video that's in more detail of this. Number one, this is a good time to document the drive in terms of purchase date, manufacturing date, and how long the warranty is and all that you can do within Unrate. Then you need to look at doing a smart test. And smart test was something initially, the whole smart technology was actually created by IBM. And uncharacteristically, they've released this out into the wild. So this has got a lot of potential to it. The smart test, a short one, is done automatically whenever the drive is installed in the system. But you have the option of doing a short or a long one. The short one is normally what's done and is supposed to catch most of the problem. But what I would suggest doing is at least once a month or when you've made major changes to the system, run an extended test. Now this is going to take several hours to run. So you don't want to run this a lot, but the short test will kind of give you a quick and dirty. Yeah, this is where, where things look like they stand. And a long one will do a little more, not invasive, but a mo little more in-depth testing. So especially if you were saving some money on drives and bought one maybe that wasn't of the kind you'd normally use, it's good to check this. Now you have to do that individually on each drive and it's not something you can schedule. And I would suggest probably doing it at a time when Unrate is at its minimum usage so you're not competing with resources. The other thing to look at will be how many parity drives are, do you want to have? You can have two is what I've looks like the max that I've seen that you can have within Unraid because of the drive failure I've experienced in the past week. And since I've got a small number of drives and I granted I bought desktop level drives instead of getting the 
NAS drives, and I'm in the process of rectifying that one, then I'm going to go to a second parity drive because that way I can lose two drives. So where right now I've got a three drive system and let's go over here and we'll get back up here into the main. So I've got three drives here so I could sustain two of those being lost. So I would be very well protected. Is that overkill? Yeah, but if I'm away from the office and I lose one drive, it's entirely possible that I could lose a second one before I get back. So at least it's additional insurance and it's a matter of what's your data on their worth. Now I'm also running a secondary unraid system plus a third system and I'm working out how to best handle all the backups. But if I'm away and my primary system, which I normally have started leaving running now because of having Plex and everything else on it, if it were to suffer a drive failure, okay, I'm covered with one cache drive. But if I'm sorry, one parity drive, need to watch my terminology. It's entirely possible at least I don't know about your luck, but with mine, if I lose one drive, there's a chance I might lose a second drive, especially if they were manufactured around the same date, put in service around the same date. You see where this is going. So it's a matter of how what your pain tolerance is for having a system go down, even if you've got backups. Because years ago, I ran a pretty good sized computer bulletin board and I had a drive fail. I had three sets of backup tapes. So I'll equate that to two two additional NAS systems running beyond the one I've got, because that was before RAID was even a, a thing, at least with the hardware that was available to my level. And this way I can have a lot of backup because I had three backups and I still lost data during the restore. So with having unraid the way it's set up and two parity drives, you're taking as much reasonable precaution as you can. And it's just a matter of what are you prepared to lose? And with having multiple NAS systems, okay, I've got backups, but one of those really needs to be offsite. And that's something I'm going to work on because I don't have a good option at this point that I've been able to find. But you've seen what to go through when a drive fails. And this was something that I knew I would experience at some point, but I barely had the system online for two months and I had a drive go. So it, it is entirely possible that it can happen, but take things one step at a time and you could always practice a drive failure. You don't have to have one go out, but you could go under here, stop the array, unassign one of the drives, take it out and then go through the review process. Basically go through everything that I did. And so that way you are prepared. I would encourage you to set up a secondary system to do this. If you only have one unrate system, only if it's you have no other choices and you've got a drive fail, what I do with this on a production system. Now, granted, that's a little conservative, but I'd rather have a little less pain now and be covered instead of taking possibly a production system down, doing something wrong, and then really having shot myself in the foot. But you see where this is going, and this is a learning experience. And besides, you can set up Unraid on a desktop system and throw a, a, a multi-port SATA card in. So you can do some testing very easily, and it doesn't cost you anything other than tying up a few resources. That's also a very affordable manner in which to set up a system where you can learn to unassigning and reassigning drives without risking your main system, especially if you don't have any other backups. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.